Character select. Press start. Choose your character. Welcome to Character Select, the show where we take some of your favorite games, cartoons, anime, and comics, and cast them in a dream movie. Choose your stage. It's a school night, boys and girls. I'm gonna have to call your folks. Going beyond their successful animated series of Batman and Superman, show creators Bruce Timm, Paul Dini, and Alan Burnett sought to evolve their mythos. Back when there was a reason to wake up on Saturday mornings, Batman Beyond continues the legacy and introduces us to a futuristic, dystopic, neo-cyberpunk Gotham. A feature where the Batman has faded into myth and legend, street gangs masquerading as Jokers have run rapid. Evening, boys and girls! Who's up for some laughs? It was now time for a new generation to don the cowl. So who picked up the mantle of the bat? A pimply-faced, smart-ass teenager with high school angst? What the f***? Where's the bat quality control here? Okay, okay. To be fair, the kid's got some moves. Plus, he's under the tutelage of the OG himself, Bruce Wayne. Having three successful seasons between 1999 to 2001, the series not only pulled from the wealth of the previous animated sources, but also branched out and created their own identity. Enduring characters... Bunk, don't! Yeah, Bunk, don't. Check. Badass villains... Check. Exciting action set pieces... Check, check, check. Teenage love drama... Uh, if only I'd been there, I, I could've... Shut up, McGinnis. Check. So let's get this match started. I'm Mike Ronan Fan, and this is my character select for Batman Beyond. Terry McGinnis. A rebellious teenager, the grounded Terry McGinnis disobeys his father and heads out to the clubs. Typical. Trouble follows as a pack of jokers chase him all the way out to Wayne Manor, where a seemingly meager old man, with some moves, saves his butt. After helping the geezers to his mansion, Terry stumbles upon Bruce Wayne's dark secret. He was the Batman. Kicked out for snooping around, Terry returns home only to find his murdered father. McGinnis then breaks into the Batcave and steals a New Age powered Batsuit in order to solve the crime. Equipped with augmented super strength, flight, rocket boots, scanners, assorted batarangs, and cloaking capability, this Batman is a force to be reckoned with. This wise cracking Terry McGinnis, I have imagined Dylan O'Brien filling the pointy eared Dark Knight quite nicely. No stranger to the action genre, the up and coming star had already cut his teeth on the MTV's hit show Teen Wolf and the Maze Runner film series. He definitely could bring the intensity. Oh, right now, where are we going? <laughs> while being the right level of charm. Take this. Oh. Take this. Just focus on the cross for now, okay? It's all you gotta do, yeah? Across. Here we go. As long as he doesn't try the whole Christian Bell gravelly voice thingy. Where were the other drugs going? Bruce Wayne! Too stubborn to die and too wary to carry on the fight, Bruce Wayne puts the vigilante days behind him. But the world would always need a Batman. Bruce now takes the role of mentor and command ops for Terry's Batman. He proudly guides the youngster to become the legendary iconic hero. Spoilers! Turns out Terry is half the genetic clone of Bruce as revealed in Justice League Unlimited 2 season finale, Epilogue. You're a stubborn piece of work, you know that. Just like my old man. These are big bat boots to fill and the only man I can see doing it is Josh Brolin. I know, I know, he's been Jonah Hex and that failure? Not really his fault. He's also the almighty Thanos in the MCU, but come on, look at his face. Add some gray hair, give him some makeup. He looks exactly like old man Wayne. It's all about the jawline, kids. His acting resume proves that he could bring the brooding cynical attitude and the sarcastic dry wit Bruce is known for. Surprised to see me? A little. I'm more surprised that I lived so long. Batman, Bruce Wayne. Bruce Wayne, Batman. Or have you met? Not now! <laughs> and to be honest, the man does look like he's been going out late at night, fighting crime and bringing justice to the streets. Our 
Barbara Gordon. Believing that the glory days of Cake Crusaders are antiquated and obsolete, Barbara Gordon, aka Batgirl, decides to follow in Daddy's footsteps. She now holds office as Gotham's current police commissioner. Resistant at first, she eventually comes around and accepts Terry's vigilante justice. Some old habits die hard, I guess. There's no other choice but to cast Kate Mulgrew. She commanded a starship as Captain Janeway in Star Trek Voyager, and then ruled the prison kitchen as a tough as nails red and orange as new black. Her character has always been strong, cunning, and smart. All attributes that embody the former crime fighter turned peace officer. Dana Tan. Dating a superhero is never an easy thing. You gotta put up with mysterious disappearance, canceled dates, and the occasional life-threatening situations. <laughs> Despite all of this, Dana has always stood by McGinnis through thick and thin. Plus, she gets a couple hits in here and there. You know who else has been a kick-ass girlfriend? Arden Cho. Another alumni for MTV's Teen Wolf, she's no stranger to complicated relationships. The transfer from her character Kira Yukimura to Dana Tam will almost be seamless. Demonstrating beauty and a dramatic flair, I think Arden Cho would personify Dana without being the stereotypical nagging girlfriend. Coach, you can't let them take her back. It's hard to explain, but if you let her go back, then really, really bad things are going to happen to Lydia, to Scott, and Styles, and maybe everyone, including you. So please, please don't let them take her. Who are you? Um. Maxine Gibson. Maxine Gibson is a close friend to Terry and a certified genius. With such intellectual prowess, she designed a compiling program to collect all interweb data on Batman sightings and statistically figure out who he is. Out of sheer boredom. Yeah, I needed a hobby, and it beats macrame. Instead of spewing about Terry's secret double life, she covers her tracks and decides to chip in. She helps the Batman with computer hacking, sleuthing, and even covers his tracks with the girlfriend. You told me you had a free evening, or did you just forget? I'm sorry, Dana. It was my fault. I was supposed to sit with Matt, but I had to cancel, and Terry got stuck babysitting. Just don't call her Robin. No problem. Alfred. Alfred? For this feisty techno whiz, I picture Kiersey Clemens. With a role like Maxine, you need someone with a spitfire personality. And if you've seen 2015's Dope, Clemens' character Diggy is just that. In the film, she plays a tomboy lesbian who is oh so adorable while portraying a street tough exterior. Look, Look just say the damn word. You're my. Mm. <laughs> it was a reflex. Sounds like Max to me. Derek Powers. Definitely an A-type personality, Derek Powers is ruthless and relentless when it comes to getting what he wants. Powers is currently CEO of Wayne Power Industries, which he uses secretly to develop and sell bioweapons. FYI does what Terry's dad, Warren McGinnis, finds out and subsequently gets him killed. Eventually, Batman engages the corrupt exec, which leads to him getting exposed to his own weaponized virus. Ah! Oh. No. No! Oh, the irony. In order to survive, he was subjugated to radiation treatment, which turned him into the walking, talking nuclear meltdown, Blight. You killed my father. Do you have the slightest idea how little that narrows it down? Jason Isaacs was the first name that came to mind when describing Derek Powers. Isaacs has made a career out of playing egotistical pricks. I, I mean, you really hate the guy by the end of most of the films he's in. From the infamous soulless redcoat in The Patriot to the father of the year, Lucius Malfoy from the Harry Potter series, Isaacs does what he does best, carry an abundant sense of arrogance. He must be very brave to mention his name. Or very foolish. Man, he's such an asshole. Hey. Elusive and cunning, Ink is the ultimate corporate saboteur with the ability to morph into any shape. She was the first superpowered villain that Terry faced off against. Now I know Derek Power's right hand man was Mr. Fix and he was the one to kill Terry's dad, but for film pacing and plot reasons, I would have Ink fulfill the role of Power's personal bodyguard instead. She would definitely offer a more difficult challenge than Mr. Fix. For this exotic beauty, I would choose Priyanka Chopra. As the star of ABC's spry thriller Quantico, Priyanka would rightfully bring the air of mystery and intrigue that Ink's presence requires. If you've seen the series, you know what I mean. And boy, can she give you a look that kills. Mr. Freeze! An oldie but a goodie, Victor Freeze aka Mr. Freeze is one of the original Batman's most tragic villains. A cryogenesis who only wanted to save his wife, an experimental accident turned him to a walking icicle. Degenerating over time, Victor is only left with his head. I have always felt if there would be a movie adaptation of Batman Beyond, Mr. Freeze would be a great way to tie things to the original series. Maybe this film could start off with Mr. Freeze being Bruce Wayne's last battle before retiring? I mean, if you really think about it, it would also help set up for a second film. Perhaps begin the sequel with Derek Power searching for a cure to 
to his radioactive condition. He would dig Freeze out of cold storage <laughs> to use him as a guinea pig for a cloning mind swapping experiment. Tragically, just like in the episode, Freeze's cloned body would revert to his previous state. This is one of the most emotionally charged episodes and my personal favorite. Not only will it be an awesome story to tell, but how cool will it be to see this battle of hot versus cold, well, you know, radioactive versus cold. Fight! For Freeze, you need someone that's well versed in playing roles with a cold demeanor. Enter Lars Mikkelsen. Playing the emotionless, blackmailing media mogul Charles Augustus Magnuson, he gave Sherlock Holmes a run for his money. Best thing about the English. You're so domesticated. And let's not forget his Russian president Putin-esque performance in House of Cards. Lars well demonstrates that playing cold and calculating characters are right up his alley. Francis. I don't get softened up by a nice dinner and dancing with a beautiful woman. Well, that's all the time we have for this episode. I'm including some honorable mentions that didn't quite make the cut at the end here. But what do you think of my choices for Batman Beyond? Did you think there are better actors for the role? Did I miss anyone? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow Altness for more character select. Until next time, I'm Mike Ronan Fan, and remember... You're pretty strong for some clown who thinks he's Batman. I am...